Love them or hate them, electric vehicles, they're here to stay and they're gonna be here for a long time. So should you buy one? And stick around to the end and I'll let you know if I plan on buying one in the future. I have noticed a lot of negative comments towards electric vehicles on my videos. And you've gotta realize my videos, they're directed towards firefighters. As firefighters, we see disaster every day. We see catastrophic failures. The average EV owner will likely never have a vehicle fire. But as firefighters, we have to be prepared for that type of situation because for us, it's not if it will happen, it's when it will happen. Now, if you're in the market for a vehicle and you're thinking about an electric vehicle, don't let the fire risk be something that stops you. Again, the fire risk is fairly minimal. However, there's a lot of other things you have to consider before making that purchase. The first thing is charging. Do you have a place to charge this vehicle? There are some people out there who buy these vehicles, they live in apartments, they think they're gonna charge them like they would fill up their gas tank. That's not really practical. These vehicles take time to charge. And if you think you're gonna find yourself a fast charger, be prepared to spend a lot of time sitting at that charger waiting for it to charge. Do you own a home? Do you have the electrical service available to charge that vehicle? If you're in an older home, you may only have a 100 amp service to your house. You'll likely have to upgrade to 200 amp service, and then you'll have to have an electrician come in and wire something in your garage or out in front of your house in order to charge that vehicle. That could be quite expensive depending on where you live or the type of charger that you have installed. Now another aspect of charging is the type of charger. You start looking at a Tesla, for example, they have a very good charging network out there. There's a lot of coverage across the US. Unfortunately, the other vehicles on the road, Ford, GM, Stellantis, the types of chargers they're currently using, those chargers aren't necessarily available, and the ones that are available, there's a lot that don't function properly. On the bright side, a lot of the manufacturers and the standard going forward, they're gonna use the Tesla standard, the North American charging standard. So you'll have access to that wide network and have the ability to charge your vehicle. What type of climate do you live in? Do you live in a climate with extreme cold or extreme hot temperatures? That can make a difference. When it's extremely cold outside and people found this out in the winter of 2022, these vehicles don't like to charge. That's because the battery box itself, the thermal management system inside the battery box has to bring it up to a comfortable temperature to allow that vehicle to charge. If it can't get the temperature up there, you're not gonna be able to charge your vehicle. You also lose a lot of range in colder climates. You lose some range in hotter climates as well. So those two extremes, those can be very difficult places for electric vehicles. How far do you regularly drive? If you never really leave your little commuter zone, your little city, then it's not a big deal for an electric vehicle. But if you're somebody like myself, where I travel hundreds of miles a day sometimes, you know, sometimes up to 500 miles, that can make it very difficult for an electric vehicle, especially if you're on a time crunch. You don't have the schedule, you don't have the availability to sit there for 30, 45 minutes, an hour to charge your vehicle to get that up to the 80%. How many people do you have to drive around on a daily basis? Is it just you? Maybe you've got a spouse, maybe you've got one or two children, or do you have six or eight children? There aren't any electric vehicles out there that are practical for large families. Yes, I understand Tesla's got a vehicle with third row seats, but let's be realistic. You try to put four kids, five kids in a vehicle with third road seating, it's not gonna happen. I'm sure I missed some pros or cons to electric vehicles, so feel free to comment below, but ultimately, it's your lifestyle that dictates your ability to purchase an electric vehicle. They're not for everybody. Personally, would I buy an electric vehicle? If I had the money to purchase an extra vehicle, a third vehicle that I could use just around town, absolutely, I would buy one. There's a lot of torque, they're fun to drive, there's a lot of features technology-wise that aren't available in your combustion engine vehicles. But realistically, I don't have the funds to put into an electric vehicle. I've got my two vehicles, my, my family vehicle, my personal truck that gets me around town, takes me those long distances when I'm out doing my trainings or just traveling the state for whatever reason. I put a lot of miles on my vehicle and for me, an electric vehicle just isn't in my future. For my lifestyle, for my driving habits, I really like the plug-in hybrid options. Having that range extender, that gasoline-powered engine to help assist the battery, give you that extra range you need, uh, to me, that's a situation that really makes sense.